We've already discussed multiplication and division of complex numbers in trigonometric form. Now let's proceed to exponentiation. Recall that to multiply two complex numbers in trigonometric form, we need to multiply their modules and add their arguments. So if we have two complex numbers, z1 and z2, given in trigonometric form and equal to the following, r1 times cosine of phi1 plus i sine of phi1, r2 times cosine of phi2 plus i sine of phi2, and their product will be the following z1 times z2 equals r1 times r2 times cosine of phi1 plus phi2 plus i sine of phi1 plus phi2. Obviously, if we want to multiply more than two complex numbers in trigonometric form, we need to act exactly as before. So we'll multiply n complex numbers, and for that we'll multiply n of their modules. Now, raising a number to nth power means that we need to multiply it by itself for n times. For the case of a complex number in trigonometric form, it, mean, it means that we need to multiply its module by itself for n times and add n of its arguments. So, to find z raised to nth power, we need to multiply its module for n times. its argument for n times. Which brings us to the formula r to the nth times cosine of n phi plus i sine of n phi. The formula we've just obtained is called the Moore's formula. of complex numbers given in trigonometric form. To appreciate the statement, let's think that we need to find 25th power of a complex number. If it is given in trigonometric form, then using Tumor's formula, we'll simply need to raise its module to 25th power and multiply its argument by n, by 25. But if we're dealing with an algebraic form, i.e. x plus iy, then to raise such number to 25th power, we have to involve binomial theorem for the power 25, which is not an easy thing to do at all and consumes lots of time. So the Moore's formula is indeed something to enjoy.